From Oshkosh Community Media Services, this is Oshkosh City Cable 10 and broadcast on 101.9 FM, WOCT Oshkosh. From Oshkosh Community Media Services and the City of Oshkosh, this is the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your City Manager. Your hosts, Nick Austin from Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager Mark Roloff. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to another edition of the City Manager's Report. On today's show, we highlight the upcoming agenda items for the Common Council meeting, Oshkosh Common Council meeting scheduled for Tuesday, April 23rd. And I must say, Mark, it is nice to be inside because the weather lately has not been all that, been all that friendly from freezing rain to just a lot of rain in general. Um, so before we get to the, the upcoming agenda items in the second half of the show, we go through the city highlights or, or uh, municipal highlights, if you will. And I think one thing on everyone's mind as of late is, what do I do with all my downed branches, all my broken limbs? And, and uh, I guess that's not a highlight. It's more of a low light. Yeah. But um, get, fill us in on, on what's going on in terms of the city helping out with, with storm cleanup right now. Sure. Well, it, it's always great to be here, but it, it is great to be inside because the weather, uh, don't convince me that it's uh, spring yet because, boy, everything we've been putting up with. But there was a storm uh, in town last week, and I think at first we underestimated the impact of it. And uh, we, got, we started getting more calls from residents that said, what do I do with our branches? Mm -hmm. And originally we were going to talk about, we were going to wait until spring cleanup. And uh, we realized that that wasn't going to be acceptable. We're going to talk a little bit about spring cleanup, but we decided that we we're going to begin a storm cleanup immediately. So mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, residents can put out uh, branches and limbs. Uh, we do ask them to, to cut it down as small as possible. We generally like it to be more like um, three inches in diameter branches, no right. longer than four feet in length. That's our standard. Mm -hmm. You know, We can bend a little bit, but recognize that um, our staff has to handle them physically right. and put them into the uh, put them into the trucks. Uh, we kind of pack them away and then send them off to a chipper truck. So there's, we can't do everything. So you're going to have to chop them down. If you can, if it's so big, you may need to go get some uh, you know, landscaping professional to help you narrow it down. Right. We'll still haul it away for you, but you got to get it narrowed down uh, because of the storm damage. Anything else is is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you kind of alluded to it already, but spring cleanup. Uh, just talk about you know when that begins and and you kind of kind of mentioned already but the proper procedures in in i guess um making sure that your your materials are picked up and collected yeah right uh well we already we have the graphic up here it starts april 22nd and it'll go for a few weeks through may 10th it's yard waste and that includes leaves although i don't think people have too many at this time of year but you got to place them in those paper biodegradable bags mm -hmm. you can get them at a, a home improvement store a hardware store they're, they're, they're very reasonable. You need to have the bags up by 7 a.m. on your regular uh, solid waste collection day. Mm -hmm. And again, the brush needs to be, you know, the bundles have to be less than 50 pounds. Our employees are handling these things. Right. Uh, but uh, the branches should be less than three inches in diameter and four feet long, uh, less than four feet long. Uh, the details are on our website. Uh, and then there's also the opportunity you always have to take it to our yard waste drop-off site. Right. A lot of residents have already taken advantage of that. Sometimes they don't want to wait until the um, uh, pickup. They don't want to wait uh, past the weekend. So we let them do it those ways as well. Now, kind of along the same lines and, and, and keeping with the, uh, the recent storms and the rain, uh, you know, even though it hasn't been landscaped yet, there's still some work to be done out at James Road, that detention basin out there. But this has kind of been one of the, the positives, if you will, to um, getting some of that rain in that. This has actually been helping out with that, has it not? Even though it's, like I said, there's still work to be done there. This is actual footage of James Road. And even though it's not finished yet, it is, it's operational. And uh, it's not pretty there because we don't have any of the landscaping really done yet, but it's already functioning. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at various uh, branches, uh, there's three branches to Sawyer Creek. Mm -hmm. Two of them go to this pond. So this pond is working for those two branches, but the area where that third branch of Sawyer Creek is, 
you can see the difference because there are um, intersections that are out there. One of them is uh, Clareville and County K. It's not in the city, but it makes its way into the city. And mm -hmm. we built James Road because we needed to get some of this water at the upper end of the of the uh, watershed, hold it back so that the rest of the city could drain. You know, I've been driving around looking at some of the channels and uh, the channel over there at Sawyer Creek that takes in um, the first two branches is doing pretty well, much better than the other branch. Fortunately, none of them have, are completely swollen yet, mm -hmm. uh, that they've gone over into yards and things like that, but it's gotten close. And, you know, this pond itself didn't even reach full capacity. So we're real happy that um, we're having an impact. Um, we dodged a bullet just the other night. We were supposed to get three inches of rain, didn't get nearly as much. But when we get those big rains, we need to have the ability to to handle that capacity. And these projects are working. We just need to take a little time. Fortunately, this is uh, an example of what over, it's over here at 9th Avenue near Mercy Medical Center. Uh, and it was filmed just uh, the, today, the day we're filming this show. You can see it hasn't swollen its banks. Mm -hmm. And that's because this is where the water from the, the pond goes downstream. Okay. So it's held, it, the water's holding back just enough water to keep the, the creek from uh, overtopping its banks. Now, of course, if it gets a little rainier, we could have different results, but right. it's it's having the impact that it's supposed to, and that's why we're investing in these uh, these ponds because they do have this type of uh, this type of benefit. Out there in the uh, the city hall parking lot, the hole keeps getting deeper and deeper. Uh, when is the next step of this project, if you will, scheduled to to kind of get underway? When it, when are we going to see more than just the hole sinking a little bit more? Well, the, uh, originally we were hoping that by now we were going to be doing the first pour of concrete, but the weather being what it is uh, has not enabled that to happen. But the big dig's still going on. It's a little bit of a cloudy picture today because of all the moisture out there. But trust me, there's, there's still progress going on, albeit uh, limited. But we anticipate that we'll be doing the first pour of concrete probably around April 25th or 26th. Mm -hmm. so, hopefully by the end of next week that we'll be getting started. That's about 10 days later than we originally thought, and we were ahead of schedule. Now we're a little bit behind, but once the weather gets a little better and we start pouring concrete, we'll be in decent shape. Now I know, speaking of construction, in kind of relation to this project, is the work that uh, is being done on Jackson Street, that, that directly is tying into this, maybe not right now, but it will, correct? It sure is. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, th this is footage that's been taken very recently. We're working on, uh, this is the downstream part of it. So once the water gets collected into the, the pond itself, then it'll discharge into uh, Jackson Street on a slower basis, but it'll get it out to Jackson Street down to the river. Downstream, particularly around Division and Pearl and Jackson and Pearl, there was a lot of flooding down there in previous storms. So we're increasing the size of the pipe. Okay. Uh, and as it discharges from the city hall parking lot, it'll it, it'll avoid that type of flooding uh, that we've had in the past. Uh, of course, the final phase is upstream, and this is known as the uh, Division Street watershed. Uh, there's a, a storm sewer that goes down the Division. We're actually going to relocate a portion of that to Central Avenue because it's more uh, centrally located for okay. this watershed. And basically, the watershed exists between Jackson and Maine. Uh, and goes all the way up to New York Avenue. So uh, what we want to do is collect that water and get it to our pond to hold it and just hold it there for as long as we can. So uh, the upstream part of it will take place next year, but Jackson's getting done now, and when the pond is done, it'll be connected directly to this. Uh, but the upstream part, the, the sewer pipe, the storm sewer pipe, mm -hmm. uh, can, be a can be made larger to get it into the pond quicker. Uh, until we do that, it'll feed the old... Uh, storm sewer into there. Sure. Another big project coming up in the uh, the not so distant future. What can you tell us about the central garage? Well, it's progressing. After 65 years, we're <laughs> finally getting a new central garage. Uh, we're actually this is going to be done in phases, so this is going to be a long project. But mm -hmm. bid openings planned for April 30th, um, and we anticipate the council would award the construction bid at their May 14th meeting, and then construction would begin in June. But again, this is going to be done in phases because, as you can see from the footage here, this is an operating site. This is not uh, a, a blank uh, piece of land that we're building new up on. Right. So we're going to build a little bit. Then we have to move things in there, tear down, build up, 
move things, tear down, and just keep repeating until we get this all done. Um, we've got some open spaces here. Some of those spaces are actually going to get filled in with uh, buildings, and then eventually we'll uh, uh, just start the uh, build and uh, then move and destroy process. And I know you kind of you kind of joked about it, 65 years or whatever you said, but this is something that that really needed to be done or needs to be done. Oh, correct? Absolutely. I mean, you take a look at the, uh, the the facility that you see here, and some of our plow trucks barely fit in here, and we actually have to dismantle part of the truck before we get it in there. Mm -hmm. It's so inefficient and so time consuming for our employees to work on vehicles. Um, plus, a lot of our vehicles aren't stored uh, inside, they're stored outside, and we use our equipment pretty heavily, so they take a lot of beatings and get, getting them out of the elements extends the life of our vehicle. Right. So it's things like that, but you can see that some of those trucks don't make it through that, that ray of sunshine that's at the other end of the, uh, <laughs> the, the building there we literally have to dismantle a vehicle to just get it in and out of a building. And that's, that's just a waste of time uh, and so inefficient. All right, well, it's that time again for everyone's favorite, as we always like to say, portion of the show. It's that time for Question Mark. All right, Mark, this person, uh, even though the weather doesn't indicate really that it's spring, this person's obviously thinking nice, warm, sunny spring thoughts. When does the Menominee Park Zoo open? Well, it, to me, it can't open soon enough because Menominee Park Zoo opening means spring is truly here. Uh, but the Menominee Park Zoo, uh, we have to wait till May 4th. It mm -hmm. opens on, on May 4th, and we're really looking forward to that. Uh, there's a little bit of good news, bad news. The zoo will open, but the otter exhibit, uh, the brand new uh, otter exhibit, will not be ready by May 4th. And that's because of the weather that's been going right. on, unfortunately. But uh, otherwise, we're just raring to go with the Menominee Park Zoo. Um, you know, we're real fortunate. I don't know if a lot of people rec realize this. Uh, we did talk about it at State of the City. The admission to the Menominee Park Zoo is absolutely free thanks to a generous gift from the Tom and Penny Herrenberg Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, they've made it possible that our residents, non-residents, anybody can come visit our park and, and our zoo. So take a look at, you know, we've got wolf exhibit, now we have an otter exhibit. No, they won't be together, um, but we're smart about that. <laughs> but we do have some great, um, some great animals and it's a, it's a wonderful experience for, for kids and family. So, uh, you got to wait till May 4th and a little later for the otter exhibit. But if you want to come on May 4th, come on back another time. After all, it's free. Um, we are so blessed to have a great uh, park system and a great zoo to, uh, to really serve the residents and visitors to the community and something we can all be very proud of. Well, and I know speaking from a parent's perspective, a newer, newer parent's perspective too, it's always nice to be able to take your kids out where you, you don't have to pay for them because you never know how long it's you're going to have Attention where they're going to cooperate, you know, yeah. but it, it can still be informational, it can still be fun. And, and I know um, my two-year-old boy loves going to the zoo. Oh, it's a wonderful experience. But yeah, you're right. You, don't, you never know how long their interest or attention span is going to go. But uh, if you can't wait for the otter exhibit, the other thing you can do is uh, the, zoo, or the, the zoo and the parks department is having a name the otter uh, contest. Mm -hmm. We need two female names for our new otters. And so you can take a look at the uh, parks department Facebook page uh, or uh, fill out an application or an application, a suggestion sure. of who... Uh, what names you'd like to give them. And if you do, they got a great little uh, prize package, a family uh, pass to the water park, rides at the zoo, uh, train, uh, free pass to the Mount Olympus water park and the Dells, uh, and other, uh, other various things that the Parks Department offers. Um, it's just a way to get people interested in the, the otter exhibit. And if you want to uh, submit a uh, suggestion for one of the two names or both names, uh, please go ahead and do it. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get to the break, the last thing, with, with without cheating, if you haven't seen the press release or haven't looked at your notes already, um, Friday, April 26th and April 27th, Saturday, is the Wisconsin Community Media Conference and Awards Banquet. 
Go ahead and guess how many, take a stab at how many, this is a little uh, shameless plug here, but a little pat on the back. How many awards do you think OCMS and partnership programs won? Well, why don't you help me out? I know last year it was like eight of them, so what, is it over or under that? It's over that. It's over that. Uh, it's well know, over eight. Well over eight. <laughs> uh, like, like 12 or? Well, we got we get, ended up with 16, and three of them uh, won awards of excellence. One that you sat in on. Hey. The City Manager Report Top 10 of 2012 was an award of excellence, which is the equivalent to a gold medal, along with uh, a Your City at Work program that we did, and then uh, the OCMS website. Well, so sh Shameless promotion, but uh, well-deserved, especially the folks who you don't see uh, in front of the camera, the folks behind the camera, right. Andy and Scott and everybody mm -hmm. involved, all the volunteers, the interns, everybody that, that uh, does such a great job to, to make OCMS uh, really probably the best uh, community media service uh, uh, operation in the state. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you singing our praise as <laughs> yeah. well. So with that said, it's time to jump to a, a, the only break of this show. But when we come back, much more City Manager's Report. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it. So listen. The most basic human need is to understand and to be understood. But most people do not listen. They listen with the goal of responding. In the word listen are the same letters that make up the word silent. It is through silence that wisdom comes. Focus on others in order to better understand their points of view. Speak your peace and listen. Visit the OshkoshCivilityProject.org and sign the pledge. On the surface, the simple pleasures in life are going on all around us. But inches beneath the surface, utility lines are carrying electricity, gas, and more to your home. Digger's Hotline helps avoid costly or dangerous mistakes. It doesn't matter how deep you're digging. Call 811 or click diggershotline.com three working days before you start your project, and we'll help take the risk out of digging. Protect your simple pleasures. Know what's below. Welcome back to the City Manager's Report. Now it's time to talk about the upcoming agenda items for the Tuesday, April 23rd Oshkosh Common Council meeting. And Mark, right actually before that meeting starts, there's going to be kind of a special gathering or special meeting. Uh, fill us in on, on what's going to be going on just prior to Tuesday's council meeting, if you would. Uh, we're going to have a workshop with the council. Uh, one of the goals that they had set for me was to work on a uh, paper performance system for our city employees. Mm -hmm. We completely revamped our um, pay system uh, in the past year, and uh, we've actually created an employee committee. Uh, that was another thing that was important with council with our strategic plan was right. to improve employee engagement. And this group's been meeting, and they're um, going to be reporting to council. Uh, I think they did a, an outstanding job, and and I really felt it was important for the council to hear directly from the employees who are helping putting this together. But it's part of revamping our performance evaluation system. Oh, I think some people think it's a little dull, but for our employees, it's it's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, paper performance is an element of how do we reward our employees for for work, and what kind of pay system do we put in place for our employees? And the council wants to do a paper performance system, and uh, we think we've got the makings of something that that I think can work pretty well. And uh, this group's going to make the presentation, and the council will hear directly from them. I'm, I'm really anxious to see the, the interaction that will, will come from this. Sure. And then when you actually get into the uh, council meeting on April 23rd, uh, one of the big ticket items right off the bat is an appointment of an individual to fill the vacant council seat. This is going to be Jeff Hall's um, yeah. seat that he vacated. What does this process involve and, and really how long is this going to take and, and how much time of this meeting will this fill? Well, there are six people who uh, filled out applications by the deadline, so mm -hmm. that kind of gives you a rough idea because uh, based on that, it's probably going to take at least an hour. Okay. Uh, what uh, 
if the council, I believe they're going to follow the process or close to the process that was done two years ago uh, when Council Member Hall was appointed. Uh, what happens is uh, each of the candidates will make a presentation of five minutes, okay. be given that opportunity. Uh, council can ask some questions and get answers, a little Q&A, um, and each of them have that opportunity to do that. Um, and then the public is allowed to make a couple minutes of comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Whoever wants to come up, they can speak um, uh, for some in favor of somebody. I think council doesn't want to have any uh, any kind of negative uh, issues here. There's, right. If you want to promote somebody, please promote somebody. Yep. Uh, and then the council, um, if they do what they did two years ago, what they did was kind of an internal poll to narrow down the number of candidates and see, okay, which two candidates, one or two candidates, does council really seem to be um, centering on? Mm -hmm. And then based on, if it's one, then they'll take the vote. If it's two, then they'll select between the two. Okay. Uh, yeah, every council can do it differently. Um, there's some guidelines that hit the council established a couple of years ago, but that's generally how it goes. But um, it'll take a good part of the meeting because, you know, there's a very important selection uh, the council makes whenever a vacancy like this occurs. So it'll take a little bit of time, but uh, after an hour, I think the council will be all set. And, uh, you know, the tough part for staff is that uh, we don't know which one of the six councils is going to pick, so right. everybody gets an agenda packet because they will immediately be seated on the council dais right after the council uh, listens to them and votes. So if, if they take a vote on Tuesday night to select one of them, mm -hmm. they're they're right in the hot seat immediately. Yeah, exci exciting for them. They just get right, right to work. Uh, under the consent agenda items, 18 and 19, items 18 and 19 kind of going together. Um, and, and both of them are, are really tying in to one of the uh, items that we mentioned back in the first half of the show, which is the Central Garage Project. The central garage, as I mentioned, is going to be done in phases. And uh, as again, it's going to be build and then move and tear down. Mm -hmm. And eventually, we'll get over to uh, the north side of West 3rd Avenue. And that's the last area um, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, uh, we're sort of moving and tearing down the old stuff. Right. Over there is actually where we're going to be purchasing some properties. Okay. So we've notified a variety of property owners that own property on the north side that we're going to acquire their property. Uh, and there's a procedure that we have to follow by state statute. Um, these first two are people who have uh, we've quickly reached agreement with. Mm -hmm. um, we've reached a price that we believe is fair and appropriate. So we're uh, putting those on the agenda for the council to approve. And that really kind of sets the stage for subsequent purchases. We've got a, um, a variety of properties up and down Third uh, Avenue, and this will just get us rolling on that. We aren't going to be building there immediately. We've got to wait until all the properties are done, number one, and then number two, we have to work our way around there before we get to that site. Absolutely. Right below that, item number 20, approval of a special event. This deals with the uh, the Waterfront Hotel utilizing city streets for their ribbon cutting on May 2nd. So when does the hotel actually open? Because the ribbon cutting is going to be May 2nd, as according to this note. I uh, spoke with Dan Shetter, the general manager of the hotel, and they will be ready to open to take guests at the hotel and guests in the Ground Round restaurant on Monday, April 29th. So just wow. 11 short days. Uh, making a lot of progress. I was uh, in there about a month ago, and it's just uh, the, the footage we're looking at here is just phenomenal um, over and above what they've done. Uh, I know they're having some events there, uh, one in particular on May 2nd after the uh, um, the ribbon cutting. So they're going to do the ribbon cutting on May 2nd, and they have an event there that night. Uh, wow. but, but if you want to go to the Ground Round Restaurant, you can go there right away. This is uh, just an indication of what some of their guest rooms are looking like. Very nice. Um, I, this isn't a place for us to do commercials, but um, we're very excited about this. Absolutely. Um, and uh, city representatives will be there, all the investors for the hotel, uh, people associated with the construction of the hotel, but the public is also invited. And it's gonna be at 10 o'clock on May 2nd, right on CP in front of the hotel. Okay. Um, this is, I think, just a little bit, just to tease you to take, uh, take a look at it, but I think they're gonna be more than happy to show people around. If, if you've got friends or relatives that wanna visit Oshkosh, I'm sure they're gonna to wanna to show you around, plus conventions. That's this, is, this will be where we'll have conventions, and uh, they're really uh, uh, honoring the, the past 
as well as the future because that's why you have uh, exercise equipment in hotels now. Uh, <laughs> they've got a lot of neat things going on there, and uh, we're excited and looking forward to their success. Yeah, absolutely. It looks very nice in there. Another special event under the consent agenda item um, number 28. This deals with Irish Fest. When does this start, and, and really how much has this event grown you know, since its inception? Uh, it's evolved a great deal. Um, Matt Miller, uh, founding member of that, has now a board of directors, a group of volunteers throughout the community. And uh, it starts on Friday, May 31st, over at the Leech Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. uh, I know they have a website that you can take a look at things, and it runs through Sunday, June 2nd. In addition to this, this is going to be a wild weekend in Oshkosh because we got a lot of events going on. Yeah. Uh, we are the event city. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have the Gus Macker 3 on 3 basketball tournament. Are you signed up? I'm, I'm probably playing pivot somewhere in one, in one of those <laughs> I'll, teams. I'll, I'll be the wing. I'll shoot the threes for you. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> uh, I think I'll probably be more at the Irish Fest and the Farmer's Market. <laughs> okay. Um, Farmer's Market opens on the on the first, on June 1st, so uh, looking forward to that. I love going down there. but. Uh, the Irish Fest uh, is just a wonderful event that brings people from not just Oshkosh, but throughout the area. Um, it's a wonderful event. Uh, let's pray for good weather and uh, continue our reputation as a great festival event city. Yeah, hopefully no more ice storms and downpours that, that late in the year. Knock on wood, yeah. Uh, under pending ordinance, uh, just one item under pending ordinance right now, um, approve mobile vending ordinance. But there, I, I know that this is getting ready to be approved, but... There are some limitations to this, correct? Uh, yeah, there sure are. The, um, our planning staff and, and other members of our staff have been meeting with uh, all the different interested parties to this. Uh, people that are interested, obviously, in doing a, uh, a mobile vending, uh, whether it's a restaurant or some type of uh, on-street selling. Uh, but there's got to be some limitations and some respect to existing businesses, Absolutely. Uh, people willing to park, uh, or people wanting to park downtown. So we actually put together a group of various stakeholders, both representing businesses that are downtown as well mm -hmm. as potential mobile vendors. And we've worked out something, uh, you know, everybody has to do a little give and take, and I think that was right. done here. But uh, for example, some of the, um, some of the restrictions are, uh, you can't be within a certain amount of feet of an establishment that is selling the same type of or similar type of product. Okay. For example, you can't be within a certain amount of feet of a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's just out of that respect. That makes sense. For, out of the restaurants paying taxes in the in, in the city, we have to respect that. Yep. And there's other restrictions as well. Um, obviously, all the health code um, uh, rules have to be followed for for um, food vending and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we recognize that this is becoming a popular type of thing. Some people do like going to the mobile vendors, so we wanted to make sure that it was done safely and with respect and accommodations to the existing businesses in town. Sure. And finally, under new resolutions, uh, dissolving of the tax incremental district number six. This doesn't happen very often, so what's going on here? What happens is that, you know, we, whenever we're talking about a potential tax increment district, we talk about all the upsides, and the upsides are that we're going to get this development, and once it's done, it'll be added back to the tax base. Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of those days. We and uh, and you know a lot of these TIF districts were formed years ago, and people don't even remember when they were formed. But all of our debt obligations uh, have been met. We have sufficient funds to pay off all our debts. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're closing this two years early. A lot of people wow. talk about, well, this TIF isn't doing well. The TIFs do well, and we make sure that they perform well. Mm -hmm. uh, we even have some money that we set aside for some housing improvements, and we're still closing it two years early. Um, what happens is uh, we estimate there's about $900,000 left in the fund. Okay. And then it'll, once we have an audit done and know exactly, it gets distributed to all the agencies, mm -hmm. city, county, school district, folk tech district. We'll probably get about $300,000 when all is said and done. So it's, and we get the tax base added back. $300,000 doesn't sound too bad. No, not at all. All right, Mark. Well, thanks as always for the time. And that's going to do it for this edition of the City Manager's Report. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.